Speaker, I ask you to consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I am delighted that we are finally addressing the problem before the House. And I rise in strong support of H.R. 1627, the Honoring America's Veterans and Caring for Camp Lejeune Families Act. This is long overdue. And the most noteworthy thing that we can observe about the behavior of the military leadership is they have been uncooperative and have been most diligent in obfuscating the problem and seeing to it that the matter has been unduly dawdled over while our military personnel were both put at risk and placed in a position where their families also shared that risk and hazard. I want to thank the chairman, Mr. Miller, the ranking member, Mr. Filner, the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Miller, and my dear friend, Mr. Michaud, for the things that they have done to see to it that finally justice is being done. The victims of the Cap Camp Lejeune contamination disaster have waited too long for justice, for themselves and for their family. The passage of this legislation today is an important first step in moving forward and providing for the victims of what has been a long and ongoing tragedy. But it is also evidence that there is st still a great need for us to see to it that the military cooperates in these kinds of investigations and see to it that the military goes beyond that and that they conduct a cleanup of the military facilities where we send our, our military personnel and our families. In 2004, I conducted a series of investigations into this and other contaminations problems as the ranking member of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. After meeting with the Marine Corps personnel and Master Sergeant Jerry Ensminger, whose daughter died of a rare form of leukemia at the age of nine. In, and I must confess that I can come to no conclusion other than that that was caused by where her father had been serving and the fact that the military had not been diligent in cleaning up its messes. These investigations revealed a great cover-up and much foot dragging and obfuscation on the part of the Department of the Navy to properly deal with the consequences of the contamination. They also showed other failures by the Department of Defense in other places, including installations in, in far distant uh, points of service like Japan. With the passage of this bill, veterans of Camp Lejeune and their families uh, who also served there are going to receive some measure of justice and help in addressing the problems they have because of where they were compelled to serve and because of lack of diligence on the part of the military to see that they were properly cared for. And they will be now eligible uh, if they served between 1957 and 1987 to receive VA health benefits for illnesses co connected with that contamination. While the passage of this legislation is a success, we all know there's much more to be done. The veterans deserve the presumptions of the service connection in the bill to ensure that they receive important benefits to which they are due. That is simply a proper concern for our veterans and for their safety. Uh, they and their families should not be put at unnecessary risk by places that they serve solely by reason of the fact that they serve at a particular place and because of slothful improper behavior by the Department of Defense higher-ups and because of cover-ups in which they did not cooperate in seeing to the proper safeguards of our federal uh, employees there and our military personnel who were serving there involuntarily as a part of their, their superb contribution to the safety of this nation. The fight continues and I'm hopeful that we can continue to bring justice to the victims of Camp Lejeune and to see to it that other of, others of our military are not put at risk because of slothful, improper, and dilatory behavior by the Department of Defense. I ask my colleagues here to understand our duty in seeing to it that the families of our military and our military personnel are not put at risk by where they serve or by indifferent and careless behavior of their government. The government has a duty not just to see to it that our military personnel are made whole, 
but they do have the duty to see to it that our military bases and military service are not put at risk by actions which make the points of service of our military unnecessarily risky because of contamination of the places where our military and their families live and work. But here we have another high duty, and that is to see that the military personnel are kept safe with their families at their side as they serve in the military bases. The military leadership has to recognize, I, I ask you now, Mr. Senator, if I extend my remark, I thank the gentleman for making this time available. Without objection. Gentleman from Florida. How much time?